let's talk about the kind of reports and statistics that you can use for a Zoom webinar. Say, for example, you have done and hosted your perfectly perfect webinar. You want to look at the reports and statistics generated. These are the four types of reports that you can use for your Zoom webinar. You can have your registration report. If you choose to have a registration process, you can have an attendee report to see the progress of your attendees, performance, and Q&A. So these are the summary reports that I have generated. Over here, you can see how many attended your webinar, how many actually registered, and attendee report shows briefly how long were they engaged in your webinar. Say, for example, you have people coming that stays throughout the webinar. Your webinar is three hours. They have stayed throughout the three hours. It will be reflected. Otherwise, it will show how long they actually will engage in your webinar. Half an hour, one hour, or the full three hours. Another report that I want to share with you guys would be the Q&A reporting. Say, for example, the questions that you raised, your audiences raised up in your webinar, they are all recorded and you can easily see their questions being asked and the answer to their questions. I'll just briefly go to another webinar that Pixel Studio conducted earlier this month. So you can see if I go to my web portal, under the left side column, I go to reports, I go to webinar, I select the type of report that I want, search for the date of the webinar itself, and then I search, you can see generate report. So this is how you actually get a report of your webinars by looking at the exported CSV sheets. You can see the entire question slot being asked and the answer that was given to your audiences. So it's a good way to keep track of the stuff that are involved in your Zoom webinars. Let's go back to the Q&A. Can you explain the engagement part of the report, please? Yes, sure. So I'll generate a different kind of report for your benefit. And then we open it up. Right, so very briefly, you can see the users that are signing on this webinar and how long they spend in time for the session in minutes. So like I said, if your webinar is three hours long, the report will give you an actual depiction of how long they actually took to attend your meeting. So if they were here from the very beginning, it will be three hours. If they left halfway in the, in the second hour mark, then it will only be two hours. Uh, Rosalina asked, for PA, are we able to do the setup, time, date, registration, etc., but release host to our bosses and other stuff? That is a good question. So, Leon, I mentioned that you do need a pro license to schedule a webinar. So, if I go back to the scheduling of webinar, you do need a pro license to schedule so you can talk to the individual department heads. Say for example, if you want to assign an alternative host for your webinar, your alternative host must also have a pro license. You can't assign to a normal Zoom account that does not have the pro license. So this is something to note about. However, when you're in the meeting itself, so long as you have broadcasted your event, your event is live, your webinar is live now, and your participants are joining in, you can then release your host rights and co-host rights to these attendees. But of course, as the host of the event, I'll remind you not to release your host privileges so easily. You could make them a co-host, but not necessarily for the host of the events. Okay, from Cindy, can we create a feedback survey form in Zoom? For now, there is no feedback survey form, but of course, if you're talking about Zoom itself, there are a lot of third-party applications for this software. They actually have a marketplace that has over a thousand apps. You could easily integrate one of these apps to use it as a, a, your survey form. Otherwise, you can create your own survey form or create your own polling if you so wish. Earlier on, I showed you guys for this webinar, I created a very simple poll. So the idea about polls is, is that you can have any event up to 10 questions per poll and up to 25 polls. So this is my first poll. I, I asked you guys, were you guys new to a video conference software like Zoom? These are your answers. So if I so wish, I can add more questions if I want to use Zoom for the polling. But for your specific survey form, like Form SG, these are all mediums that you can use outside of Zoom, but not within itself.